Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm having a crisis of mojo. Um, my get up and go has got up and left and Mr Mojo has left me completely. And uh, I'm in the mood for creating something. I just don't know what. Now whatever I've started today, I've just just hasn't worked, hasn't gone right, and I haven't felt that kind of creative spark in my brain that's made me want to continue and carry on with a project. Now, normally when I get into a situation like that where I've just not got any creative spirit in me at all, is I normally seek inspiration from other sources. Or sometimes I'll sit and flick through Pinterest and see if there's anything on there that kind of sparks my imagination, whether it be a colour scheme, whether it be a layout, or whether it's um, a, an art project that has a particular piece in there that kind of gets my creative juices going, if you'll pardon the phrase. But sometimes as well, I also like to flick through magazines. Now for today, I've got the April, sorry, the, is it the March, April? Yes, the March, April edition of Somerset Studios. And on page um, 118 and page 119, there are four projects. Now I'm just going to show them real quick because I don't want to get into trouble for copyright or anything. Um, there, this one here. Colour, layout, theme, but not necessarily size. Um, now these are created by a lady, I'm presuming it's a lady, um, called Irrel Noble, um, who lives in Gilbert in Arizona. And there's a double page spread for those four projects that um, that they've created. And the colour scheme grabs me because it's all earth tones, it's all kind of rusty coloured, but it also incorporates, or they also incorporate um, corrugated cardboard and textures from metal objects. Now that speaks to me. So I'm going to have a go at creating something along those lines from that magazine using what I've got in my stash. So, to start off with then, I have a piece of old corrugated cardboard. I've got a photograph of Ian wearing his steampunk outfit done as a faux cabinet card. I also have an old photograph of Ian as a baby. So this is what I'm going to use for the main focal point, the main focal image for this project. I've also gone through my kind of junk mixed media drawer and I've pulled out a few bits and pieces, a few cogs, a few key, well a key, a clip, some Tim Holtz bits and bit, bits and bobs, um, some uh, metal page protector corners and a few bits of old book text. Now one of the other things that I have already done is I've also got a piece of uh, Tim Holtz Coordinations cardstock and this is kind of like a greeny colour and I've used um, an embossing folder and it's like a metal plate one, that one. It came in a set of two, one's got a checker plate on it, this one's got the, the plates with the rivets on which I thought was quite apt for Ian um, and I've put it through my big shot and I've just torn the top and the bottom and with this stuff, this is an emery board, so just for doing your nails kind of thing. And I'm just going to very, very lightly just go over the top to kind of reveal a little bit more of that texture of the embossing from that background. Just to kind of age it a little bit. Not heavily, but just enough so that it does begin to stand out. And I can even get in there and just age up some of that backing bit. That will do. So you can see it all standing out quite nicely now. So corrugated cardboard. I'm going to pull and peel some of these pieces off so that it reveals that corrugation underneath. So this is going to take 
quite a few minutes to get to the point where I've got enough of it peeled that I'm going to be happy with it. So what I'll do is I'll make a start on it and then I'll either fast forward and play some music depending on how long it takes me before I'm satisfied and happy with it or I'll just jump to the end where I've done it and it's a fait accompli. So I shall get on and start peeling bits of paper off right now. Okay, I think I'm happy with the amount of corrugation that's on show there now, just breaking through the background. Although I might just add a little bit more up here, just looking at it, just to break it up a little bit more. That's more like it. Yeah, I'm happy with that now. Okay, so I'm going to put that to one side and then I'm going to bring out some um, of the Rusty for Paper from Viva Decor. And this is a fairly newish pot. I did have to replenish mine because um, somebody borrowed for a project and used it all up. So I'm just going to go over now and just start lightly painting over and loading up this rust paint and it does have a, um, a texture to it as well, there's like a, a sandy gritty texture to it which adds a great depth to the project. So again, I'm going to cover the whole thing, but I'm not using a big brush because I don't want to um, push down or put so much pressure on that it tears further into the corrugation. So I'm just going over lightly and then in some areas a little bit heavier. Now bearing in mind that I will have this piece of paper over the top so I don't have to put much in the middle, just have to concentrate on going around the edges and loading all that up. Because if you wanted to put something down to protect your, your craft mat, I've got lots of different things that I can use. Just grab piece of polypropylene because I don't know whether this new craft mat's going to stain. I've managed to get some yellow stains and I don't know where it's from. So quickly add it on. Right, I'll continue going and adding this lot on. Imagine I'm nearly finished now, aren't I? No, probably jump, jump into the end now, I'm nearly done. Let's see, let's get some texture in there. All good stuff. So a lot of that 
all painted in. So I'll give that a quick blast with the heat gun and then I will be right back. Now that that rust paste is dry, I've got a bottle of alcohol ink that I've mixed with some more alcohol just to water it down a little bit. And I'm just going to spritz it so that it runs in to those nooks and crannies in the corrugation. So it's going to gather in there and then darken up to add a little bit more depth into the background. And of course with it being alcohol it doesn't take that long to dry. So I'll get my heat gun on it again and as soon as that's dry I'll be right back. So now that's dry you can see where it's all darkened in those areas. All added a little bit of more texture and a bit more distress into those darker areas and those depths. But we can go one step further than that. I've got some raw umber paint. So this is a kind of darkish brown. Just need to give that a bit of a shake. I haven't used this for quite some time. That should do it now. That's better. And then just grabbing that brush that I used earlier on, I can then start to add some more of that dark distress. Run it deep into some of those corrugations. Make it darker in areas. But I'm not too bothered about going over the rust because I can always go back over again which I will do and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do with that in a little while. Just make some more darker grungy areas particularly around the edges. Get darker grungy and dirty around the edges. There's no exact science it's just a question of adding it until you're happy with the way that it's starting to look grungy, dirty, distressed with all that texture. Bring that a little bit further in there and then maybe just a little bit further down. Now of course bearing in mind that some of this is going to be hidden Just like so. And then I just need to wash off that brush. I found a water pot. And then get that dried. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so now that paint is dry, we can bring that rust paste back again. Just grab a little bit more. And then I can go over and just dry brush over the top. Now that will, as you can see, leave that dark paint down in the grooves, but cover the raised edges of the corrugation. doesn't take long to do and pretty much dries almost instantaneously. It's a great way to add some aging and distress and texture to your project if you're doing grungy texture projects that is. If you're not then don't bother. Okay so one more quick blast and then I'll be right back. So now we've got our piece of textured cardstock. As you can see, that's the one that's being embossed. So I want to add some of that rusty color onto this just to kind of blend that in on the sides. So before I stick it down, I'm just gonna grab some more of that paint and just catch it on the edges. I 
just to bring some of that colour from the outside into the project. Like so. So it starts to kind of blend together, unifying the colours from the outer to the inner. Cool, that'll do. Don't have to go mad. Sometimes, as we know, less is more. So again, I need to get that dry quickly. So everything is dry and I've moved the um, corrugated cardboard to one side for a second because I want to start adding in some book text elements to this now. So I have, um, as I showed you earlier, I've got a couple of pieces of book text that I want to add and start creating a kind of layered cluster piece. So all I'm going to do is just drop some glue on the back of that piece there there's a little bit of wiggle room on this glue this is the Tombow mono aqua liquid glue so that should start grabbing in a few minutes and then there's one smaller piece that I want to add to the bottom so that I've got it down here just about there on the bottom to add some more glue and then I can stick that down there like so I'm gonna add some more but I want to layer up some of the other pieces first. And we've got to be careful to do it in the right kind of order. So that's going to go pretty much about there. So we're okay now to actually start adding the glue to the back of that. And I can use gel medium, matte medium, or a structured paste if you want to, or structured gel on the back of this, it doesn't make any difference. It should still all hold and grab. Like so. And then I'm gonna put just something a little bit heavy on it. That'll do. Just to hold that down long enough for it to, let's see if I've got anything heavy on that side. There we go, that should do. So I'm gonna leave that for a few minutes to grab hold and then we can come back and start layering up the other pieces. So while that is gluing and sticking down I can then bring in some of the pieces that I want to add onto the canvas. So grabbing my paintbrush that I've just quickly washed off quickly dry that and grabbing the rust paste I can then start to add some of this rusty coating. Now the good thing about this stuff is that you don't need to add a lot. You don't need to add gesso either. You can start building the coats up pretty much right on top. Start dabbing it on, start building up that kind of rusty patina. Just dab it down. And as it dries you can just keep on adding layer upon layer and the 
spring. Start adding the rust to that spring. Or you could just go up and find a rusty one if you wanted to. This is one of those projects that's quite involved. Just take a little bit of time to do. And there's lots of little bits to it that you can kind of get yourself lost in. It's a great kind of project if you've got something on your mind and you just want to lose yourself. Build up the layers, build up the layers, keep going. If you wanted to add Jessup on these first, you could do. I'm going to put that brush to one side and just have a quick go at a different method. So I'm just going to grab an ink blending foam and grab some of that texture paste and let's just see whether or not we can get more of a coverage haha <laughs> look at that that works better rusty components now and of course you can dry them off with your heat gun and then come back and add more which is exactly what I'm gonna do next okay so that's the first coat done and then I'm just going to add a second. I'm not going to go mad. Just all adds to that texture. Absolutely perfect. Now, give it another quick blast. So, one thing I will say, and it's common sense, but I'm going to have to say it anyway. Don't forget, if you're using a heat gun on metal, be very, very careful. Make sure you let it cool down before you pick up and start handling. Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself. Okay, so. I've let these cool down, but I can still feel a little bit of heat coming from them, but not enough for me to burn my fingers when I pick them up. So that rust paste has started to darken down now. You can see it's started to look a bit more like real rust, but I want to add some more of that darker kind of colour to it. So using that same spray from um, the alcohol ink that I had earlier, I'm just going to start adding a little bit more colour to it just to kind of break it up a little bit and again if I'm going to use the heat gun on it it's alcohol so it will dissipate pretty quickly but I can just put it to one side and leave it to dry naturally and that will only take a few minutes so that's exactly what I'm going to do so I'll put those out to one side and then we can bring back our piece that we had earlier now I can start to layer these up now. So I've got my photograph of Ian and I've got my little corners that I want to add onto this piece. I've also got my faux little cabinet card that I want to put there. All my metal pieces are all to one side but I want to start adding in a little bit of 
grunginess to the corners of this, but also to that. Oh, that's one of the metal pieces just falling off the tissue, just to add a little bit of colour and darkness into that, just to kind of grunge it up a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing using some potting soil archival ink and ink blending foam. And I'm just going to start kind of grunging up, dirtying up the edges of this photograph. Now obviously this is a scan of the original photograph, I'm not using the original although he does have quite a few photographs of it as a baby, fortunately for me, so I can laugh. Start to add in a little bit of darkness, a bit of age, a bit of grunge, just to tone that all together into the project. And I could of course, if I wanted to, add a little bit of rust paste on there as well, but not at this stage. And then I can just go around that little mini cabinet card that I created. I have layered these on grey grunge board just to give it a little bit of um, rigidity. There we go. Just like that. Let's get rid of those. Get rid of some of those bits. There we go. And then I can add some more of that book text as a cluster piece. Now that I've added that grunge. Uh, before I do that, I want to add those book corners nearly. So I've just got a bottle of glossy accents that I've just put into a little fine liner bottle. So that should just fit on that corner like that. The glossy accents will hold. And I can either put the glossy accents underneath, just on the corners, and they will grab or I can add it directly to the four, four book corners directly. Either way, they're still going to grab and they're still going to hold. I think sometimes it's easier just to add it on the edges, actually on the metal book corners. And you can pick these up very, very cheaply. I got mine from eBay. It didn't take very long to get here either. There we go. So we've got our little book corners there now and then I can add my little bit of book text just on that bottom right hand corner and then the final piece I can just add over here maybe just down the side like that, about halfway up, just to add a little bit point of interest. And then I can then add my glue onto the back. First of all, before I do that, I want to grab that little clip. <laughs> and then I can settle that down just on there. I can feel that glue grabbing already. If I just lift that up a little bit there, it's going to stick down a little bit better. Oh, 
That's more like it. Cool, like that. And then I can either glue this down, just add some glossy accents on there, because it does make a good glue. Just put that in the corner. like that, just like that, let's put my needle back away and then we can start to add our metal bits so I'm able to put that needle back on there so I can either use glossy accent or a blob of 3D gel, glossy accents works just as well. And I've got my little cog that can sit in the middle there. And then I've got my key. So I'm going to add Let's see the accents around the edge, just on those points where I know it's going to touch. And that should hold it in place. And the same thing with the spring. should hold that in place and then I've got the other circle that other little coglodite piece Take a few seconds for the glue to take hold. And I've got my key or the keyhole. Okay, so I'm going to leave this for a few minutes or so. Time for me to go make a drink. So I'm getting a bit dry throaty. So I'm going to pop you on hold for a sec and then I'll be back when this is a chance just to set a little bit and then I can go make myself a drink. Okay so all refreshed, drinked up, coffeeed up, caffeined up. So I've grabbed my pokey tool and I've just gone through and poked a couple of holes um, through the, the card for these last two remaining bits and pieces. So I'm just going to thread them through, or try and thread them through. Making sure I've got the holes lined up as best I can. And then just push those threads through. Now, never remember, are they arms on a brad or legs? on a brad. There we go. So that's going to hold that key hole in place, or the escutcheon in place. And then for the number plaque and slide that straight through to the back and do the same thing. Let's see that's just dropped straight off. But that's okay. Because that's what glue's for. 
So that wasn't holding on very well, was it? So I need to add maybe let's have we got some 3D adhesive tape and a pair of schizars. Yeah. Mm, no. Because you're going to see the hole through there, aren't you? I'll need to push and have that pushed right down before it's going to hold in place. But that's okay. But as far as the actual composition is done, that is done. So I just need to add a little bit more detail now. So I've got some Dina Wakely turquoise paint. And I'm going to add just a few little dry brushed touches just to give it a little bit of patina in certain areas. So just a little bit of dry brush and then I can just add a little bit of colour. Just a little bit of highlight here and there. It's just these kind of finishing touches that just help to lift project slightly. good thing about this is if you think you've put too much of the, the patina paint on you can always go back a bit later on like I'm gonna do now and this is the the raw umber that I used earlier on and I'm just going to take a really really small amount look I'm just going to very very gently that way you can tone it down if you think you've got too much on. Or you could just go back over again with that rust paint if you wanted. And just add it, or just add a touch more. But as far as that's concerned, I think I'm really, really happy. I'm not going to put um, uh, any kind of words or legends on there because it's a photograph. I know who the photograph's of. Ian knows who the photograph's of. So we'll probably end up putting this in a nice little frame and then displaying it somewhere in the house. So there you go. So I've gone from having no mojo whatsoever into a little spark of imagination that has created a little piece that's personal for me and for Ian too that we will, like I said, end up displaying in the house. Ian's already seen it and is absolutely fallen in love with it and he thinks it's absolutely wonderful so we've agreed already that it's going to go up somewhere in the house. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. It's all from me for now. I will see you again in a couple of days. Bye for now. I've got paint on my hands. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels without whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you.